Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 43 of the Social Liability Podcast. I'm your host, the Raspberries, with my co host, the Buck Grundle, bringing you new and interesting stories from all over the world about those folks in our lives that violate the social contract that we all agree to live by. Oh, Bucky Bucky, how you been? Well, yeah, it's pretty uneventful here in the uh, in the bustling metropolis of none of your business, but you know, it's uh, you know another day in life. No complaints here. How but how about you, man? Uh, right now, I have a bunch of stories for people violating the social contract in my life. I would love to tell you right now, and I probably will in future episodes. Unfortunately, I see the one uh, is going to probably go to litigation. So I gotta, I gotta keep that under wraps for the time being, um, but uh, it, it's definitely gonna be worth the, the wait. Um, don't the, all, all I, I will say is don't try to commit insurance fraud against somebody who used to be an insurance fraud investigator. <laughs> well, that's that's a given. <laughs> y- yeah, this guy doesn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> eh, but it is you what know. it is. So, As, aside from the uh, non-disclosure cap, though, how else have you been? How, how else has your week been? Well, again, I've I got some pretty good news this week. I did tell you about it. Uh, unfortunately, I can't. Again, since I'm not allowed to know about it, I haven't told. I can't tell anybody about it because who knows who listens? And like you said, the bustling metropolis of uh, Nunya kind of have to have a little bit of anonymity in our lives let's let's face reality but um so we did have a bit of a uh what's the word i'm looking for uh, you're you had a you had a, do- a conversation with your doctor and if you don't want to talk about this i will edit it out but we're going to record it now just for shits and giggles um in regards to uh an issue you had a couple weeks ago and we found out the root cause yeah oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yep <laughs> Uh, I have to take a uh, an injectable medication for erectile dysfunction. It's called Trimix. Yes, and it's and my first. You, you, let, me, my... let me rephrase. We've done this over a couple of episodes now, and you've done a whole episode of Better Than Bad about this. Right. So it's not it's not like we're I'm outing or anything here. Okay? No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I, and like I'm completely comfortable talking about it. I mean, like you know, it it's just it comes along with the territory. But you know, so. So I got the vial, and the pharmacist, without, like, great certainty, told me that there was about five doses in there. You know, one milliliter per dose, five doses. And I was like, oh, okay. Now, and for those she, of you that are not even... For those of you that are not in the medical field, a milliliter is not a tremendous amount. No. It's, it's not. It's not. It's not. So, you know, and they even said, you know, well, whatever your doctor told you, but normally it's about five milliliter, or it's about one milliliter per, per dose. There's about five in here. I was like, okay. So without consulting my doctor, just, you know, happy about the fact that, you know, I got $114 on the price tag for this vial of, you know, prescription for fun. I just, I looked at Caregiver Katie and I was like, we better play it safe only put 0.8 milliliters in there don't put the full dose in we'll just start at 0.8 and we'll work our way up so we were thinking responsibly you know care 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 for katie's just like are you sure and i was like yeah put it on red spin the wheel (laughs) you know well she did the wheel was spun and it turns out that after speaking with my doctor during a follow-up because he had called me quite concerned. He's like, you know, how's Big Buck doing? I'm like, yeah, Big Buck's doing good. Yeah, this, you know, is, this, Buck is, is... this is subsequent to being in the emergency room and being yeah. drained. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, so what? And uh, he's like, well, you know, I just wanted to make sure you weren't afraid. I was like, hell no, I'm not afraid. I'm I'm, I'm waiting to get, I'm getting, I, I want my Wonka ticket from you. He's like, what? I was like, yeah, put me back on the horse, boss. Let's go. I was like, but just out of curiosity, what is the proper, like, <laughs> recommended, like, before I even go any further, you know, how much of this, you know, wonderflonium should I have been using? <laughs> and he goes, well, I'm having a trouble, I'm, I'm looking at the notes here, and it says you use 0. 0.8? It's like, yeah. He goes, yeah, no. <laughs> I was like, what do you mean, yeah, no? He's like, try 0. 0.1. 
I was like, oh. <laughs> I was like, that explains it. The caregiver Katie without missing a beat goes, well, we had a good time. <laughs> and the doctor, the doctor, For the first couple like, hours. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, we're used to we're used to being at two hundred dollars a boner. Okay, we just found out that this five milliliter, like vial of fun in my freezer right now, only has a recommended dosage of point one milliliter. That's fifty doses for one hundred and fourteen bucks. That's two dollars a boner, fella. That's wow. That's hmm. That's that's okay. <laughs> it's cheaper than Viagra and Blue Chew. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like the PBB ratio, PBB being the price per boner, or PP, price, price per, per boner, boner yeah. ratio. <laughs> you know, is is definitely a lot better than than you know most oral erectile dysfunction remedies. Let's address the elephant trunk in the room. How's <laughs> Big Buck? <laughs> Well, you know, Big Big Buck is weathering through the storm. You know, starting to look like there's consent again. <laughs> <sighs> and what does your shirt say today? It says, save gas, ride the handicapped. <laughs> oh, my God. So, basically, you just... You just sit at home and be horny all day now is what it comes down to in your life is what it seems like. Retirement is you suiting you well. You have no idea. <laughs> Man, people people are like, oh, retirement, ah, blah, blah. You know, I'm like, no, 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 bitch. I thrive in this shit. <laughs> I, I, I sit here like a captain on a fucking ship, man. I order my groceries. I'm like, yeah, I want some Burger King. I had DoorDash bring it right to my house. I had my buddy up here. I was like, watch this, man. Mobile command center. I don't even have to get up. <laughs> Everything just comes to me. Jeez. It's like waving a it's like waving a wand. <laughs> and now I got two two dollar yeah, and I got my wand all primed and ready now too, buddy. Two bucks a boner. So we have a bunch of stories today, Buck. Um <laughs> and they're they, they kind of run the whole gambit. Uh but th this is one I'm, I thought we should start with because this is seems too ludicrous to be reality but i assure you that it is florida mom shows up to daughter's school wearing boxing gloves fights child and gets arrested you know i i've, I've had to the point where i've had to go to the school because of a, a child issue with you know somebody else's children and mine and I, I never once thought about taking boxing gloves <laughs> You know, it would probably be the last thing on the list of things I would pack as well. You know, mm. I don't think that my logistics professional would be like, oh, don't forget your boxing gloves. Well, Edith Riddle, 34, arrived at, a, at the school wearing a boxing glove, telling school officials it was super glued to her wrist and she couldn't remove it. And the next thing is so funny is somebody actually believed her. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, in all, in all fairness, geez, really? <laughs> I mean, why would why would it be glued? In, in what world would that excuse make sense to somebody? I would have I would have, I would have asked for proof. I would have been like, let me try. <laughs> if it's if it, it like show me show me where it is glued. Is it on the interior of the glove? Then you should have been in school when it was your time. I'm not going to allow you into this one with that glove. Well, this, this Jacksonville mother, mother is charged with child abuse after a fight with another student on campus at the DuPont Middle School last week, a Jacksonville police report states. Edith Riddle, 34, was arrested by Duval School Board Police on Thursday. A school safety officer heard a teacher's frantic announcement over the school radio that there was a fight occurring outside the cafeteria at 12.14 p.m. According to the report, when the officer arrived at the fight location, he found Riddle, who had been involved in a physical fight with the victim. Riddle had just exited the school with her own daughter after a meeting with the vice principal on campus. Rather than exiting the campus directly, the daughter walked out of her way through the cafeteria to engage the victim in a fight. Riddle's daughter pushed the victim to the ground and threw some punches before the suspect also joined in, punching the victim, who was lying on the ground. 
A witness said Riddle appeared to have a boxing glove attached to her left hand. The report says Riddle had the boxing glove on her hand when she arrived at the school and had told the police it was super glued to her wrist and she couldn't remove it. The victim suffered abrasions to her knees and forearms, according to the report. The girl's parents arrived at the school and told police she wanted to pursue criminal charges. The parent took the victim to St. Vincent's Hospital for a follow-up evaluation, and both Riddle and the victim are not related. Uh, who cares? She was arrested and charged with one count of child abuse with personal slash special weapon. I have no idea what that means, but... One, who the heck would super glue a glove to their own wrist? Uh, even if it was a prank, why would you still go out with it like that? Um, at least cut the glove off. You know, something. But in what world would, would that excuse fly with anyone? It wouldn't. So this was obviously a premeditated thing where she was she's going to... She's, she came to that school, a 34-year-old woman coming to the school looking for a fight. At a yeah, middle school. A it's not even a high school, a mind you. It's a middle school. <laughs> Looking at the police officer, like, oh, what a pleasant random happenstance. I just happened to beat the shit out of this kid. But it's a, it's a good thing I had this boxing glove conveniently super glued to my wrist at the same time. Uh, considering the boxing gloves, it kind of makes this fantastical. Uh, you think there would have been some follow-up whether the glove actually was glued to her or not? I, I, so I tend to believe that it was not. I'm not. I'm. I, I immediately thought that that was bullshit. Yeah. Like I saw the second you started saying that, I was like, "Oh, yep, that's gonna be the hill she dies on." Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so you 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 for whatever reason, which we will never know, she had to go pick her kid up from school, and the kid was obviously angry and made a detour instead of going to the door to go to the cafeteria to fight this kid. And she just went right along with it. I mean... Not along with it. It was probably the mom's idea. She's like, oh, you know what? If you want to go and get a couple of blows in on this chick, I'll back you up. You <laughs> yeah. know, I won't start it. I won't start it, but I'll make sure it finishes in your favor if you get my drift there, kiddo. I got you, fam. I got you. <laughs> uh, I mean, there, there's, there's, they're sticking up for your kids, and there's just like, really? <laughs> Right. Like, that's the kind of shit that you see on, like, Dr. Phil. Oh, my God. Is that still a thing? I, you know what? I, I don't know. Is Jerry Springer still Honestly. a thing? All right, moving on to our second event for the day. This one, again, is out of Florida. Uh, where two teens alone in Tesla, no one in driver's seat, when it backed into a patrol car, deputies say. Uh, there was no one behind the wheel of a Tesla when it backed into a fl Flagler? Flagler County. Okay. Flagler County patrol car in Palm Coast last week. Deputy said there were only two teenagers inside. Deputy said the 14 and 15 year old told them the car was in autopilot mode when it backed into the patrol car. According to the Flagler County Sheriff's Office, a deputy pulled the 2018 Tesla over after he noticed it driving on the wrong side of the road after exiting the Wawa station located on State Road 100. Deputy said the car complied, came to a stop, and then backed into the cruiser. The deputy saw that there was no one in the driver's seat, only the 14 and 15-year-old inside, one in the passenger seat and the other in the back seat. After questioning the teens, the deputy said that they determined that one of them had been operating the car before putting it in autopilot, causing the crash. Uh, the teens told deputies they were traveling from Charleston, South Carolina to visit one of their fathers, but the mother of one of the teens said she was unaware that her daughter was leaving the state and thought she was at her grandmother's house <laughs> with a Tesla, which aren't cheap, folks. No, that is not a pack of gum. No, I kind of want one, but I, I'm not going to throw down that kind of coin for a car. Uh, uh, no, sir. Why? No, I, I wouldn't buy that car. If you, if you gave it to me, I might drive it. A car like that has got to have, like, a whole bunch of cost. It's like owning a BMW. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and that and the charging and everything else. I, mean, I, I kind of like the idea of it. I just, I'm, I'm hoping that it actually becomes the norm down the line, but 
I digress. While there was no damage to the FS FCSO vehicle, there was $300 in damage to the Tesla. Deputies said the teen driver was given a citation for driving without a license. These kids are very lucky that no one was hurt and their actions didn't have more serious consequences. It doesn't matter if you're driving a smart car, driving with a lot of license is still against the law. I hope these kids have learned a valuable lesson and I am grateful that no one was hurt and only minimal damage occurred to the vehicle. I don't think that's how the autopilot mode works though. You know what? I'm not, I'm not familiar enough with it. I, I think it, I it, mean, it, it kind of like just, it does its thing. It's like we're, people used to think cruise control was like autopilot. They'd set cruise control and then, you know, start fucking around or getting up out of the pat of the driver's seat and then the car would just careen off a cliff or something um but the autopilot i think it just stays in the lane like it looks at the lines and stays in the lane. i don't think it actually says like take me to buck's house and the car goes okay go into buck's house we you know it doesn't i don't think it does that not yet i i'm i don't believe so either i mean hmm. all i can think of when somebody says autopilot is back in the late 1900s, there was a uh, there was a guy who was driving his like Winnebago, and he set the autopilot function because that's what they were calling it when they sold the uh, the motorhome to him. It's like yeah, you know, you got your autopilot, and this is their funny way of saying cruise control. <laughs> and so the guy got up, he set the autopilot, which was actually cruise control and cruise control only. He set it. And then got up and went to the back of his uh, Winnebago to make himself a sandwich and crashed his freaking motorhome. <laughs> like I remember, I remember that. That's my only experience with autopilot in any kind of current event have until you, now. Have you ever considered getting a Winnebago? I would love to have a Winnebago, but I can't. Because caregiver Katie would litter it with all sorts of like girly frou frou stuff, and I would run over it with my wheelchair and feel bad forever. I, I kind of wish I had one of those jobs where everything was just remote. Didn't matter where I was in the world. I would totally, totally live in an RV <laughs> and just travel constantly. You would so be that dude, and I would love to be your friend if you ever if you if that dream ever becomes fruition just remember your friend buck well yeah because i'm gonna like, i'm gonna need a place to park the winnie when i go out of the country so yeah that's what i'm that's that's what i'm saying that's what i'm saying just remember your friend buck man like i got you i could totally dig the rv lifestyle you know that <laughs> i got oh yeah man and i got a ghetto pass tattooed right on my leg man we can go anywhere we so go anywhere. What, what you're saying is we ought to get a Winnebago, have it painted with the Social Liability Podcast logo, and do a do a, a, a national tour with the podcast, right? So what are we gonna do? We gonna start a GoFundMe then? You know what... <laughs> man, we could totally take it to the upper decks, man. <laughs> if gonna... we took this show on the road, <laughs> if we took this show on the road, we could have like 50 listeners by next January. But, but where are we going to record it? I mean, we're going to go like the Walmart parking lots <laughs> looking for social Dude. liabilities. <laughs> Dude, social liabilities live in the streets from McDonald's. I mean, like, that's where half our stories come from, drive throughs But how much time would we literally spend in Florida alone? Oh, yeah. We'd be spending a lot of time in the Sunshine State. No, we just get, we, no. No, 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 no. We could outsource that. We could outsource that. We 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 live in the internet dimension, man. We have a friend in Florida for somewhere. I'm sure. I know of at least two people I know in Florida. I'd be happy to go around with GoPros on. Be like social liability on you know on this on location <laughs> on location location liability. I mean, like I mean, we 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 could bark the fuck out of this. So next we're moving on to Fox 43 News, which is I got up around our old stomping grounds, Buck. Uh, this is a woman who intentionally coughed on Pier 1 patron writes letter to judge, says life now resembles a bad movie. 
Deborah Hunter submitted 23 pages of threats and profane insults to demonstrate the backlash she endured. I deserve it, but my children do not. It's the cough heard around the world, followed by an avalanche of hate directed at a First Coast woman. We've been following the story of the Nassau County woman who deliberately coughed on a cancer patient inside of a store. She faces sentencing next month for a misdemeanor assault. And on your side, Taylor Harrison says the woman told the judge she's not asking for mercy, but gave him two dozen pages of threats and insults she says she's received since that coughing video went viral. So <laughs> this this story was originally sent to us by uh, another member of the Mount Moon crew, Sadar, and she has nothing but contempt for this woman. And I, I think that's rightfully so. The woman decided that she was an anti-mask person and decided to cough directly on a cancer patient. Mm. Oh, come on. Now, granted, she might have known he was a cancer patient, but nevertheless, the fact that she's just going to be a jackass like that. But let's get right into the story here, bud. Uh, Jacksonville, Florida. My kid should not have to pay the price for my mistake. Well, unfortunately, you know, decisions are made. Citing thousands of text messages, emails, and social media postings, and, quote, even hand-delivered letters. The woman known widely as the Pier 1 Coffer. <laughs> what a <laughs> what a hell of a moniker. I'm the Pier 1 Coffer! Ha! Give me all your money! You're gonna put it right next to the Unabomber. Ugh. Uh, asked a judge to consider the backlash she endured since the June incident. Deborah Hunter said her children, quote, continue to suffer indignities caused by my mistake. Embarrassed, chastised, and mocked by both their peers as well as adults. Each of my three children have lost nearly every friend they had. So that's called your responsibility, lady. Uh, the viral video captured Deborah Hunter deliberately coughing on a fellow shopper at the town center mall in anger. Hunter was not wearing a mask, and the woman she coughed on was a cancer patient. Hunter was subsequently charged with misdemeanor assault. She faces up to 60 days in jail, and the county judge, James Ruth, uh, appears inclined to sentence her to at least some jail time, having rejected prior settlement deals for probation only. In a three-page letter to the Duval County Judge Ruth, Hunter said that she does not, she is not seeking mercy, but instead wanted him to understand what led up to the incident and to intense... In, I'm not sure what this word is supposed to be, but the backlash that she and her family has endured. Uh, she said the family underwent a series of traumatic events in the months prior, including a near-fatal boat accident and a house fire that destroyed her home and most of her belongings. On the day of the incident, she wrote, My daughter was alarmed when she noticed a stranger recording the three of us with her phone. Admittedly, I was immediately uh, infuriated and demanded the customer stop filming my kids. In the heat of the moment, I overreacted in a overprotective manner, which ultimately led to my retaliation on the stranger. And the, this was a highly regrettable split-second knee-jerk reaction that cost my family dearly. Hunter then submitted 23 pages of messages she's received as the video gained international traction. Uh, you are disgusting, wrote one. Kill yourself, wrote another. <laughs> uh, despicable, vile skank, wrote another. I hope your family gets COVID and suffers immensely, then dies. Okay, let's just let's just pause there for a minute. That's never okay. <laughs> no, no, it's not. That's that's never okay. Uh, telling someone just go kill yourself, eh? That's not wishing COVID and death upon people's children. Not okay. Not okay in the least. Um. Hey, you know, I, me personally, I can chalk this up to her making a, a bad knee jerk decision. You know, now that now that I have some details as to what's happened, you know, she's out shopping with her kids. She's an anti masker. So what? That's what she believes. You know, we, you and me personally, yeah, it's not the best route, but to every each his own to, to some regard. And I, I can see them, you know, flying off the handle you know, and and acting like an asshole and coughing on somebody out of out of a knee jerk reaction, it doesn't make it right. I don't think that you should go and be you know absolved just you know for being sorry. I do think that there should be some punishment involved, but you know, telling somebody to kill themselves over this, hmm, there there are like you know piece of shit skank, you know whatever. I can I can. 
I can I can ride behind most of those monikers when you're when you're talking about somebody who does something like this, this kind of capricious malevolence. But at at the same time, wishing death upon them and their whole family. Mm, now now that's that's just tiptoeing across a line, right there. You know that that you know that's the mentality of people with pitchforks and torches, which. You know, in modern day society, as much as we'd like to sometimes, we have evolved socially from that kind of behavior. And wishing death upon something, you know, just arbitrarily, not even arbitrarily, you know, you might have a reason, but it's not a good enough reason to just tell somebody to kill themselves over. I just, that that's just me. And you never target anybody's kids for any reason. Ever. No. That's uh, off limit. Another person even wrote, "Your children should be ashamed to have a disgraceful, pathetic, brain dead retard of a mother." Fuck you. Other attacked her as a hog from hell, a nut job, white trash bitch, a nasty T. What, what's T? T. I don't know. Four word, four letters starts with T. Now we're gonna start doing crosswords here. Um and stupid W uh, and that's censored too. I don't know what these uh, are. Uh, t- it starts with a T, four letters. That's a twat. Nasty twat. Okay, okay. It's W, five letters, and it's not uh, probably not water. <laughs> damn. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Well, but, but, no, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. I can't throw a puzzle out there. And come on, man. Is there anything before or after the no W? It's du- just it's just stupid W four censor marks. Stupid, well, which maybe? I, it, the... I mean, which fits? But why would you censor which? Yeah, I don't know. Like, you know what? People, people like me often will start dropping the f bomb, and then all of a sudden just switch it off and try to edit my own voice box and be like, "Now shut the flip up." Yeah, yeah I, I got told it, I got told at work yesterday that they were going to institute a swear jar, and I said you can't. They can't find a jar big enough. I'll fill that sucker too fast. That and yeah, you, and they I, they said, well, I've noticed like now I'm even saying stuff now. Like I've dropped the f bomb. I go, yeah, I do that all the time, but I never drop the hard c at work. Just remember that. <laughs> no, no, that's there's again there are lines that you do not cross. Until that day, Hunter said her house had been a gathering place for neighborhood children. But the semi-idyllic life came to a screeching halt. We no longer take family bike rides around the neighborhood. We no longer wave at neighbors passing by. She compared the st- the stain of her act to wearing a scarlet letter. I went from that mom to that woman, Hunter said. I realize that all that may sound like a bad movie script. I assure you, I never thought I'd be playing a starring role in a social media feeding frenzy. Hunter also gave the judge three letters of support from women who attested to her good character. One said that the video was highly edited and did not show the entire story. Uh, Another wrote that she was not surprised when she saw the video because in the days before the Pier 1 accident, her friend had reached a level of negativity and drama that would be characterized as toxic. She added that it was only a matter of time before something happened. A third woman testified Wednesday at the first part of Hunter's sentencing hearing asking the judge to empathize with how it must be for her to attempt to move forward each new day in this relentless court of public opinion. <laughs> Hunter then... I just, I, 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 I just want to throw this out there, man. It said something about the video being highly edited. Well, I just want to, I just want to circle back to that real quick. You circle okay, on Okay, and I, I will, buddy. I will. Because you're going to be involved in this fucked up rant. And, uh, you know, I'll tell you, as far as editing a video a video goes, if I were to catch somebody coughing on me in public on video, the very first, very first thing I would do is call you on the phone and be like, where do you want me to send this? <laughs> because if you don't think, if you don't think for a hot fucking minute... That you're not going to edit that thing before it hits the 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 annals of time forever. You're out of your damn mind. Of course that video was edited. Of course it was. It should have been. It better have been. 
That dude's a cancer patient. Some he but he should have had his own personal Raz. Because I'll tell you what, right now, you know, if I get some shit like that, I'm pulling the cripple card. I'm gonna be like Raz, take it home. <laughs> and yeah. I don't know. Have you, just, have you seen the editing jobs I've done to your videos? Have you watched the videos I've made for you? <laughs> yes, and that's why I'm saying, man, if I'm going to have anybody park this lame-ass pony in a stable, it's going to be Raz. <laughs> uh, yeah, check out the Better and Bad series. It's just saying. <laughs> Hunter, that, uh, though, alluded to this in her letter to the judge, I often wonder what it would be like if every one of us as the flawed human beings we are, had the worst moments reduced to a short video for all the world to see and judge. Hunter's next sentencing hearing is next month. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> With bated breath, we shall leave. Well, we, we, we will wait and see how this unfolds. Will the dastardly deeds of the Pier 1 coffer cost her dearly in the court of public opinion on the next episode of Douchebags? <laughs> Oh, boy, I'll tell you what, Medicaid here in Virginia bought me this entire chair, but until we figure out how this mystery unfolds, I will be on the edge of my seat. That was horrible. Yes. That was horrible. No, it wasn't. Was it was awesome. That was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. Uh, well, here's our next story, Buck. A Florida man shot a neighbor, according to his daughter, in a heated dispute over ducks and geese. <laughs> Have you ever had duck, a duck? <laughs> duck. Duck. <laughs> Goose. Bang. <laughs> Bang. <laughs> I I you know, I've started, you know, thinking about all the fights I've may have had in my lifetime. I can't think of ever having a heated dispute over ducks and or geese. <laughs> Except maybe with duck, also the Mount Moon crew. <laughs> no. I mean I've had a fight with a goose before. Yeah, but geese are that, assholes. That that was my motherfucking bread, and I kept it. <laughs> That's all there is to it. But I didn't fight anyone else. Like, there was no other human being contact. It was just an altercation with our avian ally, the goose. Oh, they are not an ally. They are not even a a, a tenuous peace treaty. They are. We are at war with the geese, sir. We are at war. Yeah, I know. I was just one. I thought I heard one squawking outside of my house, and I just had to throw that out there. Remember, I am in a wheelchair, dude. <laughs> they fly faster angry than I roll scared. Well, the ducks enjoy eating seeds, which can lead to destruction of local lawns. According to the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, they may also transmit the avian influenza virus and other diseases human and native waterfowl. The commission wrote on its website that controversies often occur between residents who appreciate the birds and residents who consider them a nuisance. On Tuesday morning, Victor, as something something Hispanic, uh, allegedly approached his friend Jose sitting on his front porch. According to the witness, the two men got into a scuffle, <laughs> after which Victor shot Jose in the arm. Uh, after allegedly shooting his neighbor over a dispute over f feeding local ducks and geese, the 83-year-old man has been charged with attempted first-degree murder. <laughs> oh, wow. my God. Uh, <laughs> this is great. Uh, Jose uh, finally let go of the gun and witnesses called the cops after kicking the gun away. Uh, furthermore, Jose captured the incident on his phone, which... <laughs> led to Victor's arrest later that day. According to Jose's daughter, the shooting occurred during a long-running rivalry between her father and the local ducks and geese. <laughs> when I got home, I found that he had been shot. I'm like, why did he shoot him? <laughs> <He's> <laughs> Victor's daughter admitted that her father might be difficult to get along with, but never imagined he would do anything like this. Although the conflict's exact nature is unknown, such birds may be a nuisance, cause property damage, and spread disease. Following a court hearing on Wednesday, Victor was ordered to be held without bail. Jose is now recovering from his injuries in the hospital. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, so why are you in here for? My neighbor was feeding the ducks. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like he should have just flew the coop. Oh, 
God, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh I, God, I, yeah. And I even hit the wrong button. Here, I got me hit the right button. Yeah. Okay, so just, just to get it out of here, you know, just because it's been a while since you guys have been subject to punishment, okay? Yep, I'm just letting you know. Mm-hmm. All I got to say about this is what the cluck. That guy should have just got the flock out of there. All this foul play led up to a very unexciting trip to jail for this gentleman. And you know what? That's just all there is to it. There. Go ahead and mash that button. I-, I was mashed it the whole time you were talking. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that was just that was just bad. <laughs> well, we've all made final payments for one thing or another. And this brings us to our crescendo for the episode. 90,000 greased pennies dumped on Georgia Man's drive as final payment after quitting his job. If you ever tried to pick up a penny, imagine if it was greased. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's why I have a paid caregiver, folks. She gets those greased pennies off the damn ground, and I watch. This story is so good. It happened in Georgia, but it's actually being reported by Sky News in the UK. Uh, Andrade Flatten now spends his evening gradually cleaning the unusable coins, but is but is trying to see the bright side. A Georgia man has accused his former employer of a childish move after he received his final payment of $915 in pennies. Andrade's uh, Flatten discovered that the hull of 90,000 coins, which were covered in an oily, greasy substance at the bottom of his driveway. Wow. Uh, on top of the pile was his final pay slip, along with an explicit parting message from the car workshop where he worked. Mr. Flatten left his job in November and claims he had encountered difficulty receiving the payment. He now spends his nights gradually cleaning the penny so he can cash them in. And it took him an hour and a half to make a few hundred of the coins usable. Miles Walker, who owns the workshop, told WGLC-TV that he didn't know if he had dropped the pennies outside Mr. Flatten's house or not. I don't know. Maybe it was me. Maybe it wasn't. I really don't remember. It doesn't matter. He got paid. That's all that matters. Yeah. <laughs> you know, answer me. You You might know the answer to this. Wouldn't it be the bank's responsibility to deal with all that greasy mess on pennies? If you just took them in there, wouldn't 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 the bank have to deal with that? I I, I honestly don't know. I think it would be up to the end. Banks are not government agencies; they are privately owned corporations. They can make their own rules. Uh, so if they decide that they're not going to take uncleaned money uh, in exchange for new currency, they can do that. Or they can just say that yeah, it's not, not sanitary. We're not exposing our workers to it. You need to clean it first. So they could do that. I, I am. I, I can't see any legal precedent without. And I am not an attorney. And I'm literally not researching this. I just. I can't think of any reason why they would have to, since they're not a government agency. Now, if they was paying off a fine or uh, or paying off a debt, rather, uh, U.S. currency is good for all debts. So. Uh, that might be a different story, but he has his money. So right, I, and you know, I just I didn't know whether it would fall into that category or not. No, it just sounds like a uh, yeah, fuck you, dude. Uh, the business yeah, I, I, the businessman. I, I really didn't have anything else there. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm sorry. The businessman then called Mr. moving along. Then called Mister Flatten a weenie. <laughs> Olivia Oxley, Mr. Flatten's girlfriend, she hopes that the incident will highlight how people are treated so poorly by their employers. But she is looking on the bright side, saying that with many pennies, we have found a few treasures. I've already found one from 1937. (laughs) After the first shovel full, all we could do was laugh. This poor Muslim man took so much time to be vindictive and cruel. So absolutely refused to let him ruin a single moment of ours. Except we can go ahead and put it on the news so everyone knows about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I I personally, like, if if somebody were to pay me in $900, it, it, with 9,000 grease-covered pennies, 
ninety thousand grease covered pennies. Ninety thousand, ninety thousand grease covered pennies. I mean, like, I'd be. At least I got paid. Is that that would be my very first? Like, that would be the only thing holding me on to not committing a violent act. It's like, well, at the end of the day, I do have my money. It's just now I'm gonna have to earn it twice. again. <laughs> I gotta earn it <laughs> again. I think, yeah. I think I would have went and bought some Dawn dish soap and a kiddie pool and just, you know. <laughs> I know. And that's that's really where my mind is going. Like, how, like, it is 90,000 of them. Like, that that's quite a few pennies to have to clean off. But, I mean, Dawn dish soap and a, and a baby pool. Done. You know, is and if you have children, I mean, like, I'm sorry. Birth is the only excuse to have free child labor. You know, it's, you know, oh, birth or adoption when my, for that matter. When my oldest started mowing the lawn, it's like, this is why we had kids. This is it yeah. right here. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's, that's what it is at the end of the day. I mean, like you, you, you went to work all day for that $915 and now that you got 90,000 grease pennies. Well, guess what kids, you know, all those, uh, those nice dinners that mom cooks. You know, know, know those happy meals that you get? Yeah, yeah, you know, all that all that stuff that makes a kid worth being a kid. Well, now you kind of have to get some skin in the game here. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, yeah, I, I remember the first time my, my kid mowed the lawn. I was taking pictures and putting them on Facebook. Not that I was proud of him. I was just, I'm not doing it. <laughs> you know? Problem solved, you know? <laughs> the, great, the great conundrum of uh, mowing the lawn has been solved. It only took me yeah. a number of years and a, a small fortune to raise a child. <laughs> I mean, all I had to do was just get a chronic illness. And now I have an excuse for not just the lawn, but like even scratching my own ears sometimes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that is the last story we have for today. Uh, Thank you for taking the time to listen to the Social Liability Podcast. We do ask that since you don't pay anything for the podcast, all we ask is that you pay attention and maybe tell a friend. Uh, the podcast is really looking to expand and get some more listeners out there. So if, if each one of our listeners tells a friend and we can get a few more listens every week, you would not believe how ecstatic we are going to be. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything. So, you know, help some brothers out. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, spread the love. You know, we, 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 we genuinely enjoy doing this. And, uh, and we would just enjoy it that much more if people were to, you know, get a laugh or two. You know? And the best way to do that is to kind of spread the message around. It's like, hey, these two guys, they talk about people who violate the contract that we all agree to live by. You should check them out. And boom. Boom. Just like that. That being said, though, thank you for taking your time and listening to us, and we'll see you on next week's episode of the Social Liability Podcast. 